Hello everyone, Dr. Hasbullah here and in this video, we're going to cover a few topics which is dimensions and units. We are also going to be looking at pressure and temperature scales and also fluid properties. But before we go any further, since you are in fluid mechanics course, I'm going to give you 10 seconds to think about a definition for fluid. So if someone were to ask you, what is fluid? So what would be your answer? I'll give you 10 seconds starting now. Okay, 10 seconds over, what would be your answer? So lucky for you, you are not here in front of me, otherwise I would have asked you what do you think the definitions are. So in simple word, fluids is anything that is not solid. Okay, it seems simple, but it defines fluid, right? So anything that is gas and also liquid is considered fluid. Most of us might think that fluid is only liquid, but no, gas is actually also fluid. So that was the simple definition of fluid. For a more proper answer of what is fluids, you can simply Google it online. Alright, so now let's get back to our topic today, which is dimensions and unit. So what are the differences between dimensions and units? Let's take length for example, okay? So length, is length a dimension or unit? I think the definition of units is pretty clear. So when you talk about length, so the unit will be in meter. So that will be your units, which is meter. What about the dimension? So length is what we call a quantity. And then you have dimension. And you also have units. Okay. So the dimension for length is capital L. Okay, this might be something new for you because usually when we talk about length, we only know the unit, but we never discuss the dimension. So the dimension for length is L. And length is what we call fundamental quantities. So if I write it here, fundamental quantities. And we also have derived quantities. So fundamental quantities means that this quantity can exist on its own, right? For example, you have length, time, and also mass. You also have things like temperature, current, and everything. But for fluid mechanics, especially our course, these three quantities, length, time and mass is the quantity that you will see over and over again. And what are the examples of derived quantities? So derived quantities is basically the combination of these fundamental quantities. For example, if you take force, right? And you know F equal to MA. So mass is fundamental quantity, but acceleration is not. So acceleration is V over T. That's the velocity over time. And Time is a fundamental quantity, but velocity is not. So velocity is mass times length divided by t square, right? So now these are in fundamental quantities and we're going to see what it looks in terms of dimensions later. So first quantity is length, the second one is time. And the dimension for time is capital T and the units is of course second. And finally, you have mass. And the dimension for mass is M, capital M, and the unit will be kilogram. Okay, and now let's take a look at a derived quantity, a very simple one, which is force. So force, everybody know that force is equal to MA. Now let's represent this force in terms of its fundamental dimensions, in terms of length, mass, and time. So we already have mass which is the fundamental quantities. So acceleration is actually length divided by time square. But this is not how we write dimension. And you know that mass, the dimension for mass is capital M, and then the dimension for length is capital L, and the dimension for time is capital T. So this is T square. And that is the dimension for 
force and the unit for force is of course just follow the dimension this is kilogram meter per second square or also known as Newton so now if I were to put this force inside this table so let me move this a little bit further down and now if I put force here the dimension will be ml over t square and the units will be kilogram meter per second square or Newton so I hope with this explanation you are clear about two things first is what is fundamental quantities and what is derived quantities all right it's quite easy to differentiate between what is fundamental and what is derived and the second thing is that you now know the difference between dimensions and unit so this is dimension and this is units okay so now if i were to ask you to find the dimension for pressure for example i'm sure now that you can find the dimension and units of pressure so pressure is simply force divided by area you already know the dimension for force and then area is simply length square right so now you can do this and also find the units for pressure also known as pascal okay now we're gonna move on to our next topic which is pressure skills pressure skills so talking about pressure okay we live in what we call atmospheric pressure and the atmospheric pressure is about 101.325 pascal or we simply write it 101.3 kilopascal or 1 atm okay so basically atmospheric pressure is the pressure that is imposed on us by the weight of air on top of us of course we don't feel anything because we are very used to this atmospheric pressure but if we go up if we fly then this atmospheric pressure will be reduced because now we are at elevated position which means that there are less air on top of our head okay so that is atmospheric pressure but now imagine that you want to pump your bicycle tire using a tire pump okay and a tire pump it has a gauge right so it looks the gauge looks something like that with a needle right and it points here okay and this is the scale okay and if you can remember what is the scale here now we know that our atmospheric pressure is 101325 so do you think that at the gauge it says 101325 right i don't think so okay i think the pressure at the gauge is actually zero now why do they put zero even though they know that our atmospheric pressure is not zero and this is the concept that you need to know which is called the pressure skills okay now the pressure on the gauge which starts from zero at the atmospheric level is called gauge pressure now let's say that this is ground okay this is ground level we know that the pressure here is 101325 and that pressure is called absolute pressure p absolute which is equal to 101325 kilopascal and p gauge gauge pressure is 0 kilopascal okay does it make sense to you right so now what if the absolute pressure is zero okay so that pressure will be down here and i'm going to call this absolute zero pressure okay so p absolute here is zero kilopascal right now at this level what do you think the gauge pressure is okay now if you were to measure a gauge pressure here at that level I believe that is going to be P gauge equal to minus 101.325 Pascal. Okay, so I think I made a few mistakes here. So this will be Pascal as well. Okay, so anything that is below atmospheric pressure, 
gauge will tell you a negative value, isn't it? Because zero is at atmospheric. Okay, so if I take another level here, which is the same as the ground level, if you go down, then P gauge will be negative pressure. Okay, and if you go up, P gauge will be positive pressure, right? And if you go to this level, for example, okay, P absolute will be P atmospheric plus P gauge, isn't it? This is atmospheric pressure, right? Atmospheric pressure. So when you go up, the absolute pressure is going to be atmospheric pressure, 101325 Pascal, plus the gauge pressure. So that will be your absolute pressure. Okay, so I'm going to write this again. So P absolute is going to be equal to P atmospheric plus P gauge. Okay, and this is very important. Another concept that makes this easier is think about temperature. Alright, so temperature you have two units. So for temperature you have Celsius and Kelvin. So 0 degree Celsius is equal to 273 Kelvin, isn't it? So for the temperature that is above 0 degree Celsius, so you will actually add the temperature in Celsius, add it to 273, then you get the absolute temperature. So basically temperature absolute, which is measured in Kelvin, is the reading in degree plus 273. Isn't it? So this concept is really similar, which is absolute pressure is actually gauge pressure plus 101.325. Isn't it? Okay. So the concept is very similar between pressure and temperature. So now you can make a distinction between absolute and gauge pressure. So next time when you pump your car tire or bicycle tire, then look at the gauge. It starts with zero. It would not start with 101.325 because that would be weird. We're going to have to calculate everything inside our head while pumping the tire. That doesn't make any sense, right? And that's it about pressure scales. Now we're going to move on a little bit more, which is fluid properties. For fluid properties, I think it's quite simple. For example, you have density and the symbol is rho and density is mass over volume. And there are a few other fluid properties that we use quite a lot in fluid mechanics, which is one of them is specific weight. And we call this gamma. Okay, and specific weight is quite simple. This is actually the weight over a unit volume. W is equal to mg, right? So this is mg divided by V. And you know that m divided by V is actually density. So you end up with rho times g. So that is specific weight, which is rho times g. Therefore, if we have water, for example, we know that for water, density of water is 1000 kilogram per meter cube. So that will be rho water times G. So rho water is 1000 kilogram per meter cube and G is 9.81. So this will give you 9810. Rho water is kilogram per meter cube and G is acceleration. Acceleration is simply meter per second square. So you end up with the unit of 9810 kilogram per meter square second square. But we know from before that Newton is kilogram meter per second square. So I can actually put here 9810 Newton per meter cube. Okay, so the unit for specific weight is Newton per meter cube. Right, and the next properties that we are going to be looking at is called specific gravity. And the symbol is Sg, which is simply rho of whatever fluid you have, divided by rho of water. So if I have mercury and I'm looking for the specific gravity of mercury, so this is Sg 
for Hg is equal to, I know that rho of mercury is 13,600 kilogram per meter cube. So this is simply 13,600 divided by rho of water we know is 1,000. And the specific gravity for mercury is 13.6 and it has no unit and it is that simple. So that is specific gravity. So I believe now you have learned two more fluid properties which is specific weight and also specific gravity. And we are going to be using these properties quite a lot in our course. So it would be a good idea if you could familiarize yourself with the concept of specific weight and specific gravity. Okay everyone, I think that's it for this video. So you've learned three things today, which is the dimension and unit. You also learn about pressure scales and also you learn about two more fluid properties. Okay guys, so good luck and study hard. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.